we're going to do a recap of the bands we saw on the first day and we wrote them down earlier and we couldn't find Morgan's phone and she left it out on the park bench <laughs> a ways away from here so we gotta go get it so we got there about 2 30 on friday went right in it was nice so this is our second year that we went there we knew where everything was already the first year never been to milwaukee metal fest it's a little bit confusing once you get inside because right the first thing you see is a bunch of vendors nothing about tickets and then you pass a bunch of other stuff nothing about tickets then you got to go upstairs and before you get outside that's where the tickets are and it's kind of confusing the first time we went through there didn't know what we were doing this time we got the tickets the guy couldn't find them and then i gaslit myself into thinking that i never bought the tickets but i know about the tickets when we went right into the middle stage was and U8 it was playing. We didn't catch the very beginning of it, so we probably caught 15 minutes of it, the last 15 maybe or 20. And I think they were probably my favorite set of the weekend, at least up there with the best. They were really good. They have good, good stage presence. All the fog was really cool. They play like a really, uh, it's like a melodic black metal style. And so the sound in, in the fest was on and off um, a lot over the weekend, but they kind of got away with, with they, they sounded good. They sounded good. <laughs> yeah, U8 it was great. That might have been the best the best set of the weekend for me, but that was a good start. It's pretty packed in there right off the right off the bat. Like I kind of figured it'd be a little empty. You know, it's the first band of a fest, so I didn't really think it'd be packed like it was, but it was. The Illusion of Fate. Illusion of Fate was cool. They were a smaller band. When we, when we first got tickets for this, we went through the at least the. Uh, the full lineups for the days that we were going. We tried to check out at least a song from each band. I don't think we, we've managed to for each artist, but they were one of the first that we found that we thought sounded pretty cool. Um, cool black metal style with some metalcore breakdowns and stuff. I think they just put out, if it wasn't their first album, it was it was at least a big album for them just the week before we saw them. So they, they were good, they did a good job. It was nice and they looked cool. Cool black metal style. I enjoyed it on the small stage. I forget what the name of the small stage was called. But um, they were good. <coughs> I think we saw Night Demon next. So <coughs> we had been to the middle stage and we've been to the small stage, but we hadn't been up to the ballroom yet this year. So we went up there. By this by this time in the set, just by the, in the fest, just three bands in, they were already running very behind. Yeah, like 25, 30 minutes. minutes. Yeah, Eight. by the end of the night, it got to be about 30 minutes. I think it was how late. Uh, I think it was Symphony X was. Yeah. They were super late, but even by this point in time, they were pretty late, but they didn't seem to be cutting anybody's set short either. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it just kept getting later and later. Um, so Night Demon were, were late, but they sounded great. Um, there were a lot of heavy metal and power metal bands at the fest, and I liked that kind of music. I wasn't really familiar with a lot of the bands there. So, um, but they, they, were, they were good. I really enjoyed their style. They were very fun to watch, especially on a big stage. Yeah. So I think Overkill we saw next. I've been a fan of Overkill since I was a kid. Eliminate, Eliminate. Um, so that was, I've never got to see them, so that was sweet. Bobby and Dee Dee sounded super cool, and the rest of the band was really good too. Played some tracks off their new album, which I thought were awesome. Played some old school stuff, that was cool. And this was up on the, in the Eagles Ballroom. Yeah, I don't think there was any, the sound just wasn't great at the top floor. I noticed a lot of people kind of felt the same way, so that's unfortunate. Um, I, I just don't know if the acoustics are manageable for that kind of music for that kind of room. But um, Overkill still sounded pretty good. Pit was crazy. I pitted a little bit. I ate shit and <laughs> got launched back. It was a good time. And then we went down and saw Heathen. Right up front for them. Yeah. I don't know if Lee Altus was playing with them. I didn't see him. We only stayed and watched them for like two songs because something X was playing upstairs about 10 minutes into their set. And we didn't want to mess it. No, we got right up front for them because uh, a man thought that Kent was my either father or older brother. And he allowed me to get right up front because he thought I was a youngin in his wording. Yeah, well, he was there with his two sons, it looked yeah. like. And then he looked at us and he's like, oh, I did the same thing for my boys. I got them up front. 
let me guess y'all uh what do you say was our first show or yeah. not our first show yeah not my first show i didn't even know what to say i didn't know if i needed to defend her honor or if we just needed to like let him we, keep talking because it was funny i i immediately went into playing on with it yeah like i just like i I just thought that that's what you were gonna do, so I hope that you would. Yeah. You chose the right path. So he was thinking that she was like my little sister and my daughter, and then a little while on the set, I don't know, I probably like leaned up behind you or something, and he was like, "Man, I'm so sorry. I thought that was like your little girl or something like that. I didn't realize." I mean, I don't know. I I was wearing a short sleeve shirt, and I have a lot of tattoos, so I don't know. Well, we saw that little kid. At the uh, <laughs> the one with the same hair. That was Dia's side, right? That was Dia's side. This, yep. So jump forward the analogy that we're making. The second day during Dia's side's pit, it was I mean it was heavy and it was a little scary. And then I look down, there's this little. He looks like a little kid. It looked like he was about ten. I, I don't think he has the has bull thing. He looked ten, <laughs> but he had tattoos. Yeah, one well, here and here. Obviously, those ones would be fake, but good. they looked real. But he had the same haircut as me, too. Yes. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. Anything about getting to see Symphony X? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was super fun. I, in my opinion, I would have chosen, or I would have wished for different songs to be played. I love those songs. I know them all. It's just like, you always want to hear your favorite song. Right. And like, I feel like... You're playing the hits. Yeah. But, but like it's okay those songs are still good right i guess that's what you get at a festival you get like the uh the, the best i mean at least the most commercial parts of a band usually you know at least for the bigger bands they're gonna get the stuff that's gonna please as many people not gonna play the deep cuts as much although some bands did play the deep cuts we saw testament yeah. doing the old stuff you know so i guess it's up to the band what they want to do yeah we saw incantation Yeah, back on the middle stage that's when that's when I started vibing. Yeah, I think that that one was the stinkiest pit of the weekend. It was a very stinky pit. Illusion of Fate was a stinky show. But Incantation had the stinkiest pit for yeah. sure. Well, that's that's about 30 plus years of filthy death metal. And those jackets have not been washed once. No, they were good though. I'd seen them before, Morbid Angel and Latane. They were very good back then too, but this was why they're they're popular i guess they got up there and they just fucking did it yeah for that for the end of the night we saw autopsy was that the last band of the that night? was the last band of the night yeah. for us we were pretty tired because that that drive that that drive in you know we kind of wanted to drive in thursday night if i could have uh gotten the time off work we probably would have done it um just you know so we can have all day but i was pretty beat by the end of the day on friday and autopsy for whatever reason they were very late getting started but they had already sound checked and everything was good to go but they told them they couldn't start playing yet because it wasn't time but they were already way past so i don't know what was going on but autopsy did like three sound checks <clears throat> and then they walked off stage for 30 seconds and then walked back on and did it but i mean chris reifer was so funny and it just it felt very lighthearted and fun it didn't feel like rock star attitudes it felt pretty cool so they had for probably about half their set they did um severed survival and so that was pretty cool i'm a fan of that that was cool i'd like to see them maybe at a smaller club show because i've never got to see them before i think uh small uh you know something like the pyramid scheme or something like that would be a lot of fun yeah but um and that was it for friday at the festival yep when we left the festival on friday <laughs> that was not the end of our night we actually had a much more uh, active night after that too. I was pretty beat after autopsy, but we we were out for probably a good two plus hours. Um, well, I guess we'll, we'll go back a little bit. Before we got to the show, we stopped at our hotel. You know, we just wanted to. We had about forty five minutes to just get in the hotel room, get checked in, put our bags down. You know, just chill for a minute. So I was. This year we did we did Milwaukee on a little bit of a budget. Last year we had a little bit more money to spend. We did three days last year, two days this year. Still had a great time, but we wanted to save a little bit of money. So this year we chose to stay maybe a little bit of a cheaper hotel. I think last year last year's was pretty nice, but we just like all right, we're gonna get something cheap. So I found a nice looking motel six online. Great reviews. 
I always read the reviews and I read all these reviews and I was convinced that I was making a right choice and it was a good price. Well, I noticed very quickly upon getting there that it was very gross, it was very grimy looking, you know, parking lot full of weeds, people loitering everywhere, just not, not a welcoming like Motel 6, you know, it's a little cheapy, but it's cozy. No, this one wasn't nice. And um, we got in there and we saw our room and it was pretty nasty. Stuff in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> so there was there was like just weird black stuff in the bed. And couldn't figure out how to get the AC to work, but like it was like a switch on the wall. No TV. No TV. That was probably the... like, no TV's okay, but it wasn't like there was just a wall there. No, and it was like there was a TV there. It was just not there anymore. It was like brackets on the wall, a a roach trap like glued right in the middle of it and everything was dusty and so and other other rooms on the floor had tvs just ours didn't i could see it when we walked past the cleaning people so i started like getting a little worried that like they just gave us this room that nobody had been in a long time because the tv wasn't fixed like maybe there were roaches and stuff like maybe that's what the problem was but we didn't have a lot of time to think on it so we just we sat down there for a minute and we dealt with it then we went to the show well, after the show, we were pretty tired and we grabbed some food while we were out, um, came back, trying to find our way around Wisconsin. Milwaukee's a crazy busy place, a lot of traffic. Uh, it was a big stressor of the weekend was the traffic around there. Um, but we got back and we tried to settle into that hotel and we just, we could not do it. I mean, we were just, all of a sudden we, we didn't feel sleepy. We didn't want to sleep there and it's like, all right, we got to do something about this. So we went ahead and booked a different hotel, which I didn't really want to do, but we booked something a little bit nicer. It was just a little bit more. It was like right behind the Motel 6, and it was like just a different world. It was like so nice in there. It, it was just around the corner, and everything felt brighter and greener it and was, nicer. It, it was. Where are we doing? We're checking into another hotel because the first one we got was really gross and they lied to us about it. <laughs> they lied. They lied to us on the reviews on the internet because they gave you money off if you gave them a good review right before you went into your room. We didn't even have a TV. There's black stuff all over the, all over the bed. Where a TV should be was a stick on a roach killer. Yeah. Oh, I didn't and even try to hide that. This one's got a pool in it. And you could hear everybody in the hallway. Well, that might have just been because of the... Yeah, never mind. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> Went in Kenosha. We walked in that new room and we're like, oh my god. Like, like we really just, like, we were really quiet about not liking the hotel. So when we finally got there, we just let it all out. It was just traumatic and we were lying over ourselves. Yes. It was, it was, it was a very nice room. It was the comfort suites. They, I, well, because we were originally supposed to get a queen, but they gave us a king. Yeah. Yep, they did. It was nice. Good sitting area. And we slept great. Slept great. Nice shower. Everything was clean. Good that we had breakfast on Saturday. Same place we had it last year. What was it called? Oak Creek? I think it was called Oak, Oak Creek Diner. They pack them in in there. Good. And they get your food out really quick. And it was really good breakfast food. At least mine was really good. Yours was pretty good. But we're picky. It was good. And I think by this point we were ready for our day, right? <clears throat> and so then, I think I think I enjoyed Saturday a little bit more. I think Saturday was my favorite day too. Saturday was really fun. There were a lot of bands I was looking forward to seeing. Then we were a little bit looser, you know. We had the day to chill. We didn't have to drive in there. Um, so we did that. Who was the first band we saw on Saturday? Martyr AD. Martyr AD was cool. I've been a fan of them. I think I read about them in a Knock Loose interview, like back in the day when Knock Loose first came out. They like, they like Martyr AD, and we like Disembodied. I like Disembodied a lot. Martyr AD is still cool. Um, saw them on the middle stage. Sound was okay. I knew a lot of the songs, but the sounds wasn't cutting through. Um, later in the day, the stage started sounding really good. But at the beginning of the day, it wasn't super great. So. Well, it was cool to see them. It wasn't the best performance. Uh, not really their fault, though. Yep, so we saw Devourment was the second man of the day upstairs. 
I'm I like death metal. I'm you know brutal brutal stuff is, is hit or miss for me, but I figured since they've been doing it for so long, they probably were pretty good at it. They were good at it. They're probably the best sounding band on the on the upper stage of the Eagles ballroom. Sounds really muddy there. Just the back a little bit, and I thought they sounded pretty good. Cause you know, all the pinch harmonics and drums were brutal. There's this crazy bass drops. They didn't play for very long. People were into it though. They, when they said they had to cut their set or the people were pissed. Yeah. They were good though, so that was really cool. But we were a little tense during this time because we were getting ready to see to meet Catatonia, which is we both love the band. It's probably her favorite band. It's one of my favorite bands. I like them a lot too. We saw them last year. We didn't get to meet them or nothing, but we saw them in Chicago, which was really good. And this year when we saw they were gonna be in Milwaukee, we wanted to get we wanted to do meet and greet, so we did do that. We don't ever do that. I haven't done that in years. It was my first time. So she's a little nervous. But um so we saw Devourment and then we went and checked in for meet and greet and then did that with Catatonia. You wanna talk about that? Yeah, so we just waited in line and <laughs> What? We waited there and uh, this <laughs> fella passed by and we waited some. <laughs> Me and Catatonia was really cool. Um, when we got there, I immediately noticed that Roger wasn't there. Yeah, the guitar player and we saw him in Chicago. Yeah, so we were like, that's weird. So we just did it with Nicholas, Daniel, and Jonas. And that was really fun. I enjoyed that. I was too nervous really to speak to him very much, but it, it was still fine. I, I'm happy. Um, well, the first thing we got signed from them, we got uh, these lanyards um, with the with the meet and greet, and um, so obviously have them sign that. That's pretty typical, but that was pretty cool. We got we got the three guys signature on that. We had them sign our copy of Shame by Ingmar Bergman. Ingmar Bergman. Ingmar Bergman. Uh, so we got their signatures on here as well. They were, um, we thought something cool was gonna happen. Well, we Ink Shame is a is a movie by a Swedish director. It's not his most famous movie, but it was a movie that we just found on VHS. We liked it very much. It's kind of a movie about a couple during wartime and how they're displaced and how their relationship changed um, just from the devastation of the war around them. Great movie. Uh, dark movie and, and being by a Swedish dude, we're like, hey, we'll get the Swedish band to sign it. So it's, they, I mean, we talked about it a little bit with with Jonas. Oh, we talked about it a little bit with all of them. None of them had seen it, but um, just as as cringy fans yeah. and tourists were like, any other half. I mean, if they pay fifty bucks, it's cool to us. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna sign whatever. They don't really care. Yeah. So it was cool. Yeah, and then I got them to sign my copy of. Um night's decision which is awesome i i feel a little silly having two of the members sign even though they weren't on this album but it's okay it's still them anders come back and then we'll get you to sign it and exactly. then it'll make more sense we had about another hour till we weren't allowed to re-enter so we went out and ate and then came back uh the next set we were really looking for was death to all they they got an hour long spot to do all the sound of perseverance I'm a big Death fan, never got to see Death Toll, so that was um, definitely a main uh, drawing point for me uh, for the festival. So for them, we, we watched Terrorizer maybe for less than 10 minutes upstairs. Um, well, awesome. I, I wish I could have caught, we could have caught more of their, their set because they were uh, Pete Sandoval, man. He just, I, I love watching where we were standing kind of on the side. I could really watch him drumming and Man, it was awesome. It was really cool. Um, I've seen Morbid Angel, not with him. Uh, I Am Morbid was playing today on Sunday, but that wasn't enough of a, what you call that, incentive for me to be there today. But it was cool getting to see him play terror, those Terrorizer songs and Dave Vincent on bass too. I think it was cool. But after that, we saw Death to All in the middle stage. I think that was the best sounding set this yeah. weekend so far. Yeah, they, uh, the sound was dialed in. I mean. Bobby Cowell, Steve DiGiorgio, Gene Hoglin, and then Max Phelps, who's always been doing the vocals and stuff. It was awesome. Um, place was packed. Pit was crazy. 
Um, you know, it started off pretty intense, you know, with um, scavenger of human sorrow and pipe of pain. Like, those are, you know, those are mosh and numbers. But, you know, as they got through the album, like, there's, I don't want to say there's anything mellow on them, but, you know, you could tell everyone was really just, it was just so cool to see those songs, uh, hear them live. They sound really good. Um, and then they skipped over Spirit Crusher, so I was like, all right, they're going to do that last. And then I was wondering if they were going to do Painkiller, because I'm like, you know, it, it would be understandable if they didn't want to do Painkiller. But when, as soon as that drum intro whipped in, I mean, people were exhausted in that pit, but as soon as the people started going, it and it was breeze. it was a great breeze. <laughs> uh, Painkiller was awesome. They did a really good job, and then Spirit Crusher coming at the end. It was awesome. You did Giorgio. Yeah. He was playing a three-string fretless bass during the Death to All set, which I thought was really cool. I've never yeah. seen that before. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't realize that, but I don't. I don't doubt it. He does a lot of cool stuff. He's great. Yeah. To forget. Our, um, Story to Tell is definitely my favorite song from that album, and they did a great job of it live. So, them and U8 were probably my bands of the of the fest for sure. We'll shift it around. We saw saw us on the green. It was a reunion show. I actually didn't really know anything from them. My my buddy Bradley Von Dutchman. I don't actually know his last name, but that's his Facebook name of Cavalcade fame. Uh, he was there at the fest too, so that was cool to hang out with him. But he was a big Swan the Green fan, so we hung out there for a while. Again, sound. I mean, they, they do a lot of like blues and like sludge stuff, and they do a lot of like grindy fast stuff, and it was just hard for it to, to cut through, right? I felt like, uh, you know, reading show of the magnitude that they were pulling off there really deserved um, better production and better sound. I mean, people were having fun, it was cool, but as for someone who doesn't really know their music, it didn't, um, fortunately, didn't, didn't um, do it for me, despite, you know, that being totally my thing. But I'm glad they're back, and I definitely would like to check them out again. Yes, yeah, so after death, we were, I think I burned a lot of energy. We were hanging out on the outside of the pit, yeah. doing some work. So we went and ate a little bit, and then we had a good string of bands after that, too. So we saw Possessed, the metal stage. Fantastic. The sound was awesome. Everybody was on point. I mean, the bracers, I mean, it's... They're legends for a reason. They seem to be having a great time too. It was really everybody was really enjoying it. I loved their last album that came out and they played a couple of cuts off that. So that was really cool to see. Yeah, Gene Hoglin uh, came and stood right next to us in the back for that set. He just dropped right by, stood right next to me and just stayed for a few minutes and then left, so that was kinda cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know what to say to him, you know. I didn't want to bother me just hanging out, well, you know, checking out Possessed with us, so that was cool. We also saw, saw Catatonia upstairs watching Death. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. It's nice to see, um, you know, something that a lot of the artists that were talking about is, you know, what Milwaukee Metal Fest was like when they had played it back in, I mean, some of them in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, you know, um, good stories and bad stories, you know what I mean? I wasn't there for it. You know, we've got to go the last two years, which is cool, and got to hear a lot of cool stories about what it was like back in the day. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of the bands that played there back in the day were probably our age, you know, in their 20s, and now, you know, some of them still been doing it for 20, 30 years, made full careers out of it. And you come back there, it's like a high school reunion, I guess, getting to play that spot again. Um, so after Possessed, after Possess, we went upstairs and saw Hey Breed. I, I liked Hey Breed a lot when I was like maybe a freshman and stuff. I really liked that stuff. I just stopped listening to it. Yeah. I don't I don't love hardcore a lot, but they Jamie Johnson commanded the stage, man. He was cool. I you know found myself remembering all of the songs and they sounded good. Really good time. We we tore it up in that pit for a while. That was fun. Yeah, and Jamie Johnson seemed very cool about it. We you see him all over the place at the festival just. Walking around. Just walking around, hanging out in the same place as everybody else was. And I've, I saw people go up and just, you know, shake his hand and say, hey, he seems super cool about it. I mean, it's a cool, it's a cool opportunity that, uh, you know, a cool position that he's in to run a festival like that that so many people enjoy. And overall, do a very good job of it. So that was mad respect for that. After them was Deicide. Yeah. Larson! Larson! If, if you like Deicide, or even if you don't like Deicide, 
You just want to see a, a really terrible televangelist just get mocked by a, a very satanic, humorous, death metal musician. Um, there's there's videos of Glenn Benton from DSI just ridiculing this televangelist from the 80s, 90s named Bob Larson. And um, he, he just seemed like a scummy dude. I think he ripped off a lot of people, but was just one of those terrible, you know, um, radio preachers that would say anything to get people to send him money and he picked up on Deicide's music back in the day and you know made a point of them and got some interviews with Glenn and they're all on YouTube and they're hilarious uh, Glenn just threatening to rip his soul to shreds and Bob Larson freaking out you make me so sick in Denver whoa, 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 whoa. I am going to bash you so hard you Glenn, wait a minute, wait, wait. You, Glenn, Glenn. my Lord, is going to spare no mercy on you, Larson. He is going to spare no mercy on you. Glenn, Jesus loves He you. is going to tear your soul from this part of the universe to the other. You will be scattered like a dead animal on the side of the road. It's good stuff. It's very funny. They, uh, they were one of my favorites this weekend. They were awesome. They were very intimidating, very evil, mm -hmm. um, but also like kind of fun and humorous. Sounded awesome, very heavy, but AI artwork is not okay. Yeah. So shame on DSI. Even if it wasn't their choice, if it was their label, shame on the label. Shame on whoever said that was okay to do because they're classic albums. People still buy those shirts with you know Once Upon the Cross and. And um, and there are other ones, and you know this new one. It's just it's just you know it's not memorable, and it's not going to have the same impact. So I feel like as an artist, you can't you can't uh, you can't forget about that. You got to have the impactful imagery with it, and you know hopefully this is just a, a fad that passes. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Are you demon possessed? Of course. You want them? Of course I do. Or they wouldn't be here. They come to kill and destroy you. They're not going to destroy me. I'll die just like you. No, you said you're going to commit suicide. You never know, Bob. The <laughs> aside was all Testament, yeah. Testament was another one of my favorites this weekend. I've been a fan of Testament since I was a kid. I've never got to see them, so seeing Chuck and Alex and Eric and Steve and their drummer, whose name I don't know, um, all up there doing it, it's awesome. Good Light Show. I think they just did material from um, their first album, The Legacy. And I, I mean, I know like Burn Off and then Over the Walls. The other ones I didn't know. Chuck Billy sounded great. Guitars sounded awesome. Everybody looked like they were having a really good time. And a band that's been doing it for 30, 40 years, it's really nice to see them still enjoying doing it because they don't want to be enjoying it. Then you know, it's hard for us to enjoy it or for me anyway. Yeah. Last set of the night and for us this weekend was Catatonia. It, that was a little bit of a rough one for me to, because, not really, because I love Catatonia, like, I, I knew all the songs, I'm there, I'm, I'm happy, but the sound was not the best, and my heart kind of shriveled up a little bit inside when I turned around and saw that, well, because they ran late, they ran like a half an hour late, and so it ran over uh, Mr. Bungle. Mr. The, you know, when the, light, not, the night went on, they would stagger bands really well. So you could run up and see someone on the big stage, and then there'd be nobody up there, and you could see someone in the middle of the small stage. So they wouldn't make it so that the smaller acts would get absolutely mogged by the big bands, which is nice, you know, like you want to split it up. But Catatonia went very over, and I think by the time they went on, Mr. Bungle was already get ready to go on so yeah it, it so, wasn't empty but it, the room was not full at all yeah and it, it it made my heart hurt because i'm like they're so good they're so so good and they deserve that room to be full so well and then we realized why their normal guitar player wasn't at the meet group because he wasn't there at all um they said so they had another dude they said uh this guy forget his name, but he had learned the set in five days. They said they almost had to cancel the festival and say why. Um, but I mean, obviously some because the guitar player. Um, but this uh, this dude learned it and... Um, he did a good job. He did a, he, he did a good job. Um, for me, Catatonia relies on backing tracks a little bit too much for my days. I love their music, but as far as like a live band goes, I, I don't like 
after hearing so much of a, of a backing track, I'd like to hear more of the guitars um, live. Um, and it, it just, the backing track did not sound good through the PA speakers. You could barely even hear it. I was really confused. People were shouting, turn the guitar up. And I'm not really sure why they didn't. You know? Yeah, and that part kind of sucked. And, but I mean, I was still happy just to watch them. Yeah. But hopefully, if next time, if we ever come across them again, we can catch them with that better sound. Or... Catatonia. We're please, sorry. Two two guitar players, just just please come back. Play whatever era of music you want. I like the old stuff, the new stuff. Do whatever. Just Brent, like, do that shit live because it's you guys are awesome, and I, I that's how that's how I would like to see it. That's just my point of view. And he did a kick. Ooh. Ooh. They're nice people. I'm I'm glad and and and, and saying all that. I'm still glad they decided to come rather than canceling the show, um, even though it wasn't them at their best. We know they're a great band, um, and it would have been really disappointing for us yeah. had they not been there. I mean, it would have it would have been really, really devastating for us. Um, so thank you very much for still coming, um, and we'll go see it every time you come around and drag whoever we can out there. And yeah. So that was that night. Uh, after that, we went home. We didn't stay for Mr. Bungle. We were tired. Yeah. It was a great day. We've been boozing it up a little, just a little bit. Um, feeling good, but it was hot. Yeah, it was Got back warmer to... la- this year than last year, I think. And there's so many people, and we were all just crowded. But I tell you what, you get close to that pit, you get that breeze. wind is refreshing it's yeah. stinky but it's refreshing it, is, it, it gives you a little <laughs> little bit of life um just to recap um i'm just gonna say what i liked and didn't like about the fest you comment on it say whatever you think um overall milwaukee 2024 we stayed for friday and saturday so i'm not speaking for sunday at all overall had a great time i think last year um maybe i don't want to say had a better time but I think it was a little bit smoother last year. Um, I don't remember there being as many sound problems. Still a really good time this year. The pros for me, um, the venue handles the amount of people pretty well, I think. I mean, a lot of people in there. And there's parking right across the road. It's expensive. The food's expensive. Merch is expensive. But I'm not going to blame the festival for that. I know it's just how things are. Very, very expensive, but it, it handles it handles the amount of people pretty well. You don't got to wait at bathrooms. They have lots of bathrooms. I really like just the general vibe of it. It's very darkly lit. Um, when you first walk in off the street, you can barely see. It's very dark, low lighting, um, not very abrasive or anything. And um, I really like that. I really like it. And there's a nice outdoor area too, where you can get you know, a lot of food options this year. They had a good amount of seating. Not a lot of protection from the sun, but enough. You're not gonna die out there. I mean, you stay in the breezeway and it feels pretty good. So yeah, I, I think that's all good. I think some of the cons, um, like we've talked about a lot, a lot of the sound, you know, I know festivals are go, 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 you know, not every, the headliners are going to get more importance and the schedule is going to get a lot of importance. Like they got to stick to it. So sacrifices have to be made, but I just, hopefully in the years to come, they either a find a venue that has better sounding rooms. I know the Raven Eagles club is tradition. I understand that, but for better new experience to grow, I mean, you got to have really good sound. Um, so I hope in the future they can figure that out. Um, cause when the sound was awesome, it's great. When it's not there, it's hard to enjoy it. That's, it's, it's music. That's how it is. Yeah. All overall, That's overall good. good. Yeah. Good. Any thoughts? The way they have band merch set up is a little interesting. Some of the bands are on tour there, but rather than having, you know, say all of U8 as merch, which I'm sure they have a number of shirts and different things. They had one shirt, you know, and most of the smaller bands have one piece of merch. And maybe that's typical. Um, I'm not totally sure, but it makes it difficult to um, support the bands that are, you really enjoy. I didn't buy any band merch myself. Actually, we got to show what you got here in a second. Actually, we'll go ahead and show the the one piece of band merch we did buy. Ueda was one of my favorite bands, and I would have. I didn't really love the shirt that they had there, but had they, you know, had some more of, of a selection, maybe I would have been able to buy one. But again, that's the problem with uh, you know festivals with limited space. They have a lot of other vendors there. I mean selling patches, shirts, CDs. Yeah, custom merchandise. Yep. 
yeah, local vendors and stuff. I mean, we didn't really check out a whole lot of it just because we weren't really we were shopping. shopping. I just wish the if they could make the venue sound good, I would be very happy because I like the venue. And if they could, if they can make it sound really good, then by all means keep it there. But we had a great time. Now that we're home today, I'm kind of you know I'm seeing them their posts on Instagram and you know, from the bands and from the the Milwaukee Metal uh, Instagram page and. I'm wishing I was there a little bit. I'd like to see Atheist a lot on the big stage, and I Am Morbid would be cool. Gate Creeper again. Gate Creeper was one of the best bands we saw last year. Marduk and Destruction were supposed to play this year, and they both had to cancel. Um, ha had we been able to see those two bands, it might have. It probably would have elevated it to a, like um, just a, a much higher level for me because both those bands are sweet. Um, they have a good um, selection of of, type, of genres. You know, it's not... They don't get a lot of metalcore and deathcore stuff that's so popular and that I'm just not a, really a fan of. Like, you know, Milwaukee back in the day was old school extreme metal, you know, like that that kind of stuff. Along with, with some more contemporary types of metal too, which is cool, but they had a lot of, had a lot of power metal this year, which you're not going to see power metal at any festival anywhere in the Midwest. You have to go to Texas or California or the East Coast. Um, so if you're into, you know, European stuff, I'd like to see more of that kind of stuff too. Yeah. Um, bring in, you know, some more of the bands, you know, I mean, Catatoni was maybe one, one of the only bands that traveled in yesterday. Yeah. But um, I know it's difficult with visas. I know it's, it's different than how it used to be, but that would be cool. Mm -hmm. But besides the power metal, I mean, they had a good selection of black metal and heavy metal like that was cool yeah. some good death metal going i mean like today they have bands like lacuna coil slaughter prevail and avatar like those kind of bands headlining and that's just not really you know i'd rather rather see the more old school or extreme side of things me personally but i know they said they sold more tickets today than the other two days so obviously there's a big market for that yeah um I mean, that's a lot of stuff for them to balance. I think they do a pretty good job of it. I'd like to see a more underground and weird stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many bands around here. There there could be a lot of cool stuff, but I'll, I'm here for it. Next year, we'll do our best to go to... Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's ever going to be like Maryland Death Fest. I mean, that's kind of its own beast, but it'd be nice yeah. to see it kind of go in that direction a little bit. I'm here for it. Um, thanks, Jamie Jostin, for putting it up. I had a great time hanging out with you. You too. Big dog. Big dog. The traffic was awful. Yeah. Chicago traffic. But in order to stay calm, we listened to Classic Cowboy Corral on Sirius XM, Willie's Roadhouse, which is my favorite thing. That keeps my... Keeps my uh, my anxiety low at work and traffic and all of that. So if you're ever feeling anxious, tune into them. They're great. Uh, that's all I got to all say. Right. Thank you, Sheldon. Now I gotta go to work tomorrow. Shit.